in the year 480 of the Second Era, High King Marius of the High Kingdom of Nibane, he had crushed virtually all opposition. His kingdom stretched from western Skingrad to Leowen and, and even had begun to encroach upon Kavat. However, diplomatic entanglements Diplomatic entanglement from the early days when he was merely the ruler of the imperial city and its surrounding provinces prevented the full reunification of Cyrodiil. A treaty of alliance signed with the then General Hieron of the Colovian Estates <laughs> placed a significant legal roadblock <clears throat> in the way of proclaiming the High Kingdom of Cyrodiil as so there was no ground for war despite a claim on the estates as they were committed allies. Despite this, both parties knew who wore the pants in this situation. Mm -hmm. Colovia didn't even own half of the province despite a treaty with the former ruler of Nibane. And the overwhelming strength of the High King had allowed him to lean on the current ruler of the Colovian estate. Incidentally, his daughter-in-law to cede territory some several disputed territories is within the kingdom of Bruma. The Viscounties of Underpal and Cloud Ruler were handed over upon threat of invasion, and the implication of a trade war if they should refuse to comply. There was peace in Sirid. Well, between the two, with the understanding that Skingrad, Kavach, and Anvil were Nibanes, and Colovia would expand no further. It was a treaty meant to cripple them. Cripple them it would. Unless they wanted to wage war against the Orcs of Falkrinth or the Red Guards of Hammerfell, the Colovians were quite limited. And they might have been family, but the High King of Nibide was not amused when his daughter-in-law refused to renounce her imperial title or claim to Cyrodiil. The offer of the position of Queen of Coral 
was regrettably not enough to sway the woman into reason. But now, with Kalovia handicapped, the Nibbanese were free to expand in other directions. Perhaps Black Marsh. They had, after all, recently acquired a vassal duke in Black Marsh in the province of Gideon. It would make sense to begin spreading to encompass other regions. After all, and who was to say when that might bring Kalovia to the table? Who was to say, indeed? And, welcome back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dark Phoenix Gaming, and this is Elder Kings 2. I hope you enjoyed my little dramatic like, narrator voice thing at the start of the episode. That was just something a little new I'm trying. As you'll see, we have united Cyrodiil because I was wanting to do a lot of the unification stuff on camera, but what I realized was we had reached the point where I would basically declare the war and essentially walk in. I recorded a lot of the you know, mopping up of stuff and it was about two three more episodes worth of it overall actually no it was closer to five because of anvil and fabrication times but yeah we did that I did all that and it was just really boring to watch And the other problem I ran into is, as I sort of suggested in that, apparently, and I didn't know this before, you can't break marriage a lot, you can't just break an alliance formed by marriage in CK3, which I think is really dumb. As a result of the fact, that fact, we couldn't go and just break the alliance that I had with the Colovian Estates and march west to take their, their lands and recreate the Empire of Cyrodiil or the High Kingdom of Cyrodiil rather as such I literally had to use consul commands to get the Colovian Estates and reunify Cyrodiil. <laughs> Which I'm not too happy about. If there had been a way to just break the alliance or just go to war with them in spite of being allies, I would have taken it. In any case. We are now the ruler of the Empire of Cyrodiil. And actually, I think this is where we're going to end it for this series. I know it feels a little anticlimactic. It does to me as well. But trust me when I say you would not have enjoyed the parts that I decided not to put in. None of those wars were interesting. It was just me walking in, doing some sieges, and winning. That's it. There wasn't much to it either. Although, now that we have our empire in the center of everything, the question is, what next? I mean, we could just have this be the end of it and start a new campaign, because I'm really enjoying Elder Kings. We could do that, or we could carry on 
And I'll just spin off the next bit into a season two, if you will. Season one was us growing from a nobody who just had the imperial city and some surrounding provinces to the undisputed ruler of all Cyrodiil. In season two, we will expand our empire and start taking over some of the other provinces. The end goal of season two or season three, depending on how long it takes, will be to proclaim the empire of Tamriel, meaning we have to completely control all the provinces. So we do what Tiber Septim did historically. Well, historically in Elder Scrolls lore anyways. And become Emperor uh, slash Empress of Tamriel because let's not kid ourselves, there is no way that happens within Marius' lifetime. He's already fifty four. Unfortunately, thanks to CK2 bullshit with sieges and peace timers and stuff well CK3 I mean it took us the better part of 30 in-game years to be able to take over all of Cyrodiil so it was without saying that we won't be establishing a continent spanning empire in the remainder of his lifetime, unless we get really lucky with the claims. I could use console commands to get claims, but honestly. That feels a little cheap. And I'd rather do this legit. But, yes, this is the end. This is where this season comes to an end. And uh, the next one will begin, <laughs> thus beginning to move into, I think, Black Marsh. But do let me know if you want to see a new series and take a little bit of a break from this one first, because there's plenty of other starts I've been considering as possibilities. So let me know what you think. In any case, thank you for watching, and I will see you again in whatever video of mine you decide to watch next. Thanks for watching, and so long for now. Take care, everybody.